Well, it's good to be with you today and uh, just to dialogue a little bit. Uh, I really had a thought today about wilderness. Now, when you hear the word wilderness, uh, what do you really think of? A lot of people, when they hear the word wilderness, they think of something very drastic, something very painful, or they can think of something dry or desert place. Uh, but all of that can be true, but I don't think we realize how much actually can go on in the wilderness place. And uh, just reflecting a little bit, most of Israel, which basically uh, Israel of old, uh, is where we finally, most of everything that we base our uh, moral principles, uh, all of the theology that was developed, uh, went on the way through the uh, New Testament. Uh, really, if we look at uh, biblical history and the Bible, we actually see that most of the things that we have built our lives around actually came out of wilderness experiences. So wilderness, uh, when you begin to look at it like that, it's uh, a place where God actually deals with us. And I'm gonna read here from uh, Joshua chapter 14, uh, verse number, uh, Joshua chapter 14, and the verse number 10, I'm reading from the New Revised Standard Version. And it's an interesting verse here and related to wi uh, wilderness. And it's about Caleb, it says, this is Caleb talking. He says, now, as you see, the Lord has kept me alive, as he said, these 45 years since the time that the Lord spoke these words to Moses while Israel was journeying through the wilderness. And here I am today, 85 years old. I'm still as strong today as I was on that day that Moses sent me. My strength now is as my strength was then for war and going out and coming. Now this is really interesting because uh, in that one verse, Caleb says a multitude of things. First of all, he talks about the fact that he literally spent 45 years of his life in the wilderness. So he's 85 now, so he's spent uh, a second generation aspect of his life in a place, uh, a wilderness place. You remember Israel? Uh, they come through the wilderness for two uh, years. They get up to the border of Kadesh Barnea. And then because they wouldn't believe God to go over into the, the uh, given promised land, they're turned around. So even though Caleb and Joshua, they believed God, the majority of them didn't. So they basically had to sort of suffer with the rest of them. But the interesting fact is, is that Caleb talks about how God had kept him in the wilderness. He says, really spent 45 years in the wilderness, accumulation of it, before we got into this possession. And he talks about how, first of all, God kept him alive. Uh, God kept him strong. Uh, he did not lose the vision of the promise of God. So for, jo for Caleb, uh, the wilderness was a reality. It was an experience but it didn't really take anything from him. It actually added to his life. When you think about the 10 commandments that we have, they were given to Israel in the wilderness. You think about all the laws, the agricultural laws, they were given to Israel in the wilderness. The relational laws, the domestic laws, uh, the financial, economical laws, everything that Israel built as a nation was given to them in the wilderness. When uh, Solomon, when David, uh, Solomon, uh, Samuel the first, I mean, uh, Saul the first uh, king, and then David and uh, Solomon, uh, you have to remember all that they were working from were things that God had given Israel while they were in the wilderness. So uh, they built buildings, but all of the structure, all the instructions, uh, all of the guidelines had been given to them when they were in the wilderness. So I would like for you to be encouraged and not look at your wilderness time as a time of things being taken away from you, but look at it as a place that God can meet with you, God can deal with you, God can help you, God can instruct you. And guess, yeah, just like Israel of old, it was in a wilderness that God gave them insight, understanding that the generations to come actually built their lives upon. So there are things that God can share with you uh, during your wilderness time that you can preserve 
uh, pass on to others. And really others can live a lifetime like Israel of old. They lived a lifetime just upon the principles and understanding that God shared with them in the wilderness. When you think about it, uh, there are various Hebrew and Greek words for wilderness. Uh, the New American Standard translates 295 times uh, the word wilderness. So that's a lot of times. That's a lot of times for wilderness to be appearing. They appear, of course, more. In other words, the main uh, word for wilderness in the Hebrew is midbar. And it just simply means an isolated place. It can be a dry place. But in that place, it doesn't mean God is not doing something. And a lot of times we just are frightened by the word wilderness. When you look in the New Testament, Matthew chapter four, immediately after Jesus receives his baptism, what, ha what does it say? It says that the spirit led him or uh, the English version says uh, drove him literally with a strong leading into the wilderness. And it was in the wilderness that we see the demonstration of how the power of the word of God worked in his life. So just want you to remember God is, can do mighty things in the wilderness. Uh, don't be frightened of the wilderness. Uh, God's presence was in the wilderness with them and he'll be with you. Uh, God did some miraculous things. Now just think about it. All of the miracles, primarily that Israel witnessed, they were witnessed in the wilderness. Not after they got out of the wilderness, but actually in the wilderness. Most of the miracles, all the phenomenal things that God did, uh, they were done at a time in their lives when they were in the wilderness. And if you look back at life, we keep going through the wilderness. We'll, we'll just have wilderness experiences. We'll keep having experiences in our lives. We'll have an experience wilderness for a while. We may come out, then we go into another. But all of our lives is really going to be a journey, including wilderness experiences. But I want you to be encouraged and know that that's the place that God can do some phenomenal things for you. Uh, you receive some miraculous things, uh, some instructional things, and really things that uh, what I call uh, gravy and, and meat and potatoes that really can get a grip into your system and you can just learn to live quality life. But it all comes about through the wilderness. God picks the wilderness place to share with us miraculous things. So while you're in your wilderness, it may be tough. Yes, may be uncomfortable in some ways, but open yourself up and expect God to do for you in your wilderness experience what he did for Israel. Oh, expect God to do uh, miraculous things for you. Expect God to take care of you, to help you, give you insight. And actually, God keeps you going in the wilderness so you can come into a better place. So look forward to coming into your better place. But while you're in your wilderness place, know that God will not shortchange you of anything. He'll take care of you. So keep that in mind and have a different perspective about the wilderness. All right. Great. Mm -hmm.